Hey everyone, today we are gonna work on the right hand technique of the picado, or also known as the rest stroke. So if you'd like to learn something like this. Then please, stick around. All right, so let's dig right into the mechanics of how we're gonna play this technique. I'm gonna give you five steps that you should always checklist when playing picado. Okay, number one, you're gonna to wanna to maintain good form and you're gonna to wanna to anchor that hand. And you're gonna do that just like we did through the other techniques. You're gonna to wanna to anchor that thumb on the sixth string. Later on, we'll talk about what we're gonna do when we make it to the bass strings. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to metaphorically think about this like a walking motion or like scissors. So just like when you're walking, you never repeat a leg. Now with our hand, we're gonna use the index and the middle finger and we're always gonna alternate. We're never gonna repeat. There's gonna be some moments where you get tempted to repeat, especially when you're crossing strings. It might feel natural to repeat, but try to remain consistent and always alternate. Number three, as the name implies, rest stroke. Make sure that you're always resting on the following string. After you follow through, you rest. Follow through and you're resting. Also, make sure your movement is coming from the knuckle. Another way that I like to think about it is like if you're tapping the guitar. Now that same type of motion, we're just applying it to the strings. Again, the movement is coming from the knuckle and we're trying to keep this nice and relaxed, this part of the finger, nice and flexible. Number four, now just like we think about this motion as walking, don't think about it like large strides. Make sure they're small steps. The smaller, the better. If you want to gain speed, just like a lot of players strive for, it's going to take a long time for the finger to come back to the string if you're doing a big movement. So you don't want to do this. You want to keep nice small steps, keeping the finger as close as you can to the string. Number five, now let's go back to the thumb. So the thumb is going to be anchored on the sixth string whenever you're playing the first, second, or third string possibly still with the fourth string. But once you get to the fifth and sixth, you definitely will be pulling off, pulling up your arm, and your thumb will be resting on the top of the guitar. As you can see, the thumb is always resting on the sixth string or it's resting against the top of the guitar for a little foundation and stabilization. If you're getting some value out of this lesson, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps the channel out and also it encourages me to make some more videos for you guys. Now let's get to the first exercise. As always, the first exercise is just gonna focus on the right hand. We won't even touch anything with the left hand. For the first exercise, we're just gonna go down that checklist and walk on the first string. Now get comfortable with the motion and walk down that checklist. Am I anchoring my thumb? Am I walking without repeating any fingers? the motion coming from the knuckle. All right, now when you get comfortable with that, we're gonna move it to exercise two. This one is gonna focus on the vertical motion on the guitar. So we're gonna do four hits per string, and we're just gonna take it up and take it back down so that you could really focus on maintaining that anchor on the guitar. So it's gonna be one, two, Now, I might have played that exercise a little bit faster than you probably will. So if this is your first time trying picado, try it really, really slow. For example. And so forth. All right, so this third exercise is gonna focus on coordination. We wanna make sure that these fingers and these fingers are coordinated and totally in sync. So again, we're gonna start off with just one string and we're gonna play a little chromatic exercise. One two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. 
Now, after you get comfortable with that, we're gonna take it to the second part of this exercise, which would be exercise three. Now, we're just gonna do the vertical motion up and down guitar using the same type of exercise. So, I'm gonna play it a little bit faster just for the sake of the video, and we're gonna do recommend that you use a metronome for this and at first you're gonna want to play with the beat so when you hear for every click that you hear you're gonna want to hit one note when you get a little bit more comfortable you can double that up so for example if the beat is one two three four one two three four one two three four now we double it up one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, of course, this would be at the speed that you're going at. So make sure you have that click nice and slow. All right, so the last exercise we're going to do is another type of chromatic vertical motion picado. We're going to start on the sixth string, and I'm going to do two notes per beat for this example. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna shift down a fret. So we're gonna go to the fifth fret and we're gonna go the opposite direction. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna go to the third fret and shift towards the other direction back again. And so forth. So one side note with the left hand is also make sure the fingers don't lift up too high, just like with the right hand. So wanna keep them as close as you can to the strings. You do not want to lift them high. That could get messier and also it will take you more time to reach the string and it will make it harder to be coordinated. All right, so if you've never played picado before, these exercises should be more than enough and sufficient for you to build a nice foundation. Just please make sure you're going over that checklist to make sure you're doing it correctly. Thanks again for joining me. If you want to stay up to date with more of my lessons, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you got some value out of this lesson, please hit the like button as it helps my channel out. And until next time, keep practicing, don't forget to enjoy the journey, and I'll see you in the next video.